ready to start the session. Uh, first talk is about Combine ML, and it's by Polito Palmas from IBM Research. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. So this is a lightning talk, so I will make it very fast. So usually you start with discussion and then demo. So I'll go to the demo first. Let's reverse the process. Hopefully the demo works and then 50% of my job is done. So basically, how many of you are using scikit-learn or Alcarit in R in Python for your machine learning? Yeah, that's good. So if you miss this kind of uh, libraries, you can actually, of course, there's now a recent scikit-learn GAL by call from, uh, which allows you to call a uh, libraries from Python to Julia Strait. So basically this, uh, this thing is a wrapper that allows you to call seamlessly these uh, libraries from Carrot, from scikit-learn. Uh, they follow the same API, so uh, you, you won't know the difference. What you can see here is that you have a combination of ensembles and, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, ensembles and uh, native libraries. So once you, uh, you see, for example, SK, means that it's a native library from scikit. And then when, once you see this is a JL, it's a native J library from Julia. And once you see the ensemble uh, names, these are ensembles that contains scikit-learn, Julia, and hopefully, supposedly Carrot, but currently Carrot is not working, so I remove it from my presentation. <clears throat> so basically, this is the idea. And you'll notice that this is running in parallel, and there's no problem with Julia to run in parallel these uh, different libraries. And the speed is almost similar to when you call it directly, because these libraries are written in C or C++. So you're just changing, actually, the call from R or Python to these libraries. So that is what the, I think the power of Julia is giving you. So I started with this project because I was, they say if you want to learn Julia, you have a certain package. And <laughs> this is the package that I like. And then I started to do some pull requests. And then I just realized that this package was not maintained. <laughs> and the guy just disappeared from the planet. The guy is, I'm still looking for this guy until now, Samuel Jenkins, if you're <laughs> somewhere around. <laughs> please do your package because I, I want to use your package. I don't want to be a maintainer forever. Anyway, so I, 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 I forked it and called it combined, but somebody from, from Jujia Computing said, you have to add something to make it more specific. So I said combined ML. So that's the history of the package. A, okay, so I was using this package, by the way, because IBM was uh, uh, involved with the porting of Julia from Intel, because in, uh, Julia is running in Intel and ARM, and IBM wants to port it to, to power. Well, what will you, you will notice is that until point 0.5, there's a power architecture that Julia is running. After that, uh, they decided to stop. I don't know, maybe at 1.0 they will start again. So I use this as my test case, aside from Knet, which is the deep learning package from uh, Professor Dennis. Okay. So I think the title in itself is self-explanatory. Uh, I, I would like to show you, for example, so this package is just a very short package because most of the, most of the, most of the uh, things are already done by this, a lot of these packages. Like I use decision tree, which runs the pruning, tree pruning, a random forest native in Julia and other boasts. I use the py call to, to call the scikit-learn libraries. And then I use the ML base and the stats base for some statistical computing. Okay, so this is the API, very simple. For example, for the scikit-learn, you say if the output is classification or regression, and then you just choose the learner among the 200 plus or maybe 500 plus of learners from, from scikit-learn. And then you, you pass a certain option. So if you do not pass a option, it, use, it uses the default options. So these are just some of the example of the available scikit classifiers. Uh, uh, honestly, I, I'm so focused with the classifiers, I never tested this thing uh, for the regression because my research is in classifiers, so that's the selfish thing for me. But anyway, it's the same with, for example, if you want gradient boosting, you just change it to gradient boosting. If you want extra trees, you use the extra trace learner. But the, the API is very simple. 
It's the same with the caret learner, for example. So if you want to use the caret from, from R, you just say my output is classification, my learner is, for example, SVM linear, and then I can, I can pass a dictionary of key value for other parameter settings. For the parameter settings, you have to, li to read the libraries uh, associated with it, and then it should, it, should, it should work in principle. And then uh, this, is, this, is, this is the, the heavy part. Uh, this is the Julia library uh, learners. So this is, uh, 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 what do you call this? This is uh, native to the library, of, but they are not using the same API. So I'm, I make a wrap, uh, this uh, program made a wrapper to, to have a common API. Okay, and then this is the, the meat of the ensembles. So you have the voting ensemble, the best learner, and then the stack ensemble. And you can add more ensembles. And this is my research. I'm doing my own ensemble, but I cannot reveal it here. So basically, voting ensemble is very simple. You have a lot of learners, so you'll see a, a collection of learners, and they are trained by the same data set, and they vote, and the one with the majority vote will, will win. So it's very simple, the voting ensemble. And then the best learner is that it, they, they receive the same data set, but they do cross-validation, and the one with the best cross-validation is taken as the best ensemble. And then for the stack ensemble, this is the one that gives you the more complicated one because you have, uh, for example, a different uh, machine learning, but you can choose your stacker to be either random forest or gradient boosting or XGBoost or whatever ensembles that you can think of. So you can have a stack of stack of stack. You can even include in your learners here the stack already that is the same itself. So you can have, you can, you can think of this as you can have a complicated stacks of stacks of stacks. So in my, in my demonstration, so this is the last part, the pipeline. You can, for example, say uh, before you, you go to the final learner space, you can have one hot encoding, in, uh, imputation, and then standard scaling, and then uh, do the, the uh, uh, actual learning. And then you do the fitting, and then you do the transformation which is the prediction, and then you compute the accuracy. That's basically the entire pipeline for your machine learning. It's very simplified. So again, for the benefits of those people who are um, late, let me show you the last, uh, how it does. So you have, so that's perfect, one minute. So this is your machine learner. So you will see there that the, you have a stack of stack, that the one, that's the one that took a lot of time, like maybe 27 seconds, because it's running stacks of stacks of stacks. And by the way, the, the values of 98 and 93, I would say that they are not significantly, uh, they are not significant statistically, because I'm using a very simple iris data set. So you can run them many times, and they, the best one. So you'll see here that the stack of stack, oh, sorry. Ah. What the hell? Uh, took like uh, uh, nine seconds because that's a more complicated uh, ensembles. I'm now ready for questions. <laughs> and I'm, I'm uh, uh, hoping that somebody will help me hack with this package so that I can give you this uh, package for maintenance <laughs> because this is just a side project for me. So. Yeah. So you've been using, you've been calling other, other packages to plug them onto Combine ML. If someone is developing a, a ML pa an ML package and they want to integrate with Combine, do you define an interface? That's a very good question. Actually, if you want to have your own algorithm, you just uh, su subtype it with the transformer, and you just define two functions, fit and transform. And then you place it in your pipeline. The pipeline will call the fit and the transform, and there you go. So it's very simple. Any other questions? All right, let's take Thank a look. Thank you again. very much.